So I'm just east of Prince George off Highway 16 on the road that goes up to the Purden Lakes or Purden Ski Hill Resort. And I'm in the interior cedar hemlock zone. Uh, we haven't talked about zones in class really yet, but it's basically an ecosystem filled with cedar trees and hemlock trees that characterize it mostly. Um, this is what's known as the um, interior rainforest, uh, but more accurately, it would be the interior wet belt. So it's not actually a true rainforest um, as most of the precipitation comes in winter as snow, um, but it is a cool shaded site that does see a fair amount of precipitation in the summer um, and it takes a long time for that snow to melt which keeps the soils moist generally throughout the summer. Um, so when thinking about this ecosystem in the province um, we think of it more accurately as an interior wet belt. Um, or the inland temperate rainforest is another way you may hear it referred to. Um, so it's quite similar to our coastal rainforest in species diversity, um, except for its interior and not coastal. So there's obviously some differences, but this is our most productive interior ecosystem. So productive meaning fairly long growing seasons relative to our other ecosystems in the interior, um, good moisture and nutrient availability, allowing for good growth, large trees, that kind of thing. So we find these at low to mid elevations. Winter is cool and wet. Summer tends to be warm and dry. Um, so I mentioned Western Hemlock and Western Red Cedar, but you'll find a diversity of species. There's hybrid white spruce in here, um, deciduous species, birch, aspen. Um, so quite a range um, on drier sites you'll even see pine. Uh, so I didn't go all the way to the ancient forest park, but I definitely recommend if you want to explore this ecosystem, you could stop here near Purden Lake, but going a little bit further is definitely worth the trip um, to see the really large cedars. Um, there's a cedar right here in front of me, but it's not a gigantic one. So if you make the trip out to the ancient forest you'll see some of the really large cedars. I wanted to come to this site uh, one because I'm familiar with where the plants are um, and less people around and less devil's club on this site. If you go to the main parking lot at the ancient forest and do the loop there there's a lot of devil's club through there. Less pleasant for walking through. So you'll notice one other thing on this site it's quite um, shaded in here. There's not a lot of vegetation growing in the understory and that's because the canopy is quite closed up. So the canopy being the tops of the trees blocking out light that's able to make it down to the forest floor. And if I look over here you can see an uprooted tree there that's created an opening in the canopy and allowing for much more growth in the understory. So the understory being um, the lower layers in the forest where the smaller trees and shrubs are growing. So we have a Douglas maple growing there and a whole bunch of young hemlock trees growing in that opening, capturing that light. So light can be the most limiting factor in a forest like this where growth is quite vigorous and high competition.